Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today, friends, we have another exciting guest on our podcast like we always do. The page is called Abolish Political Parties, and we're speaking with the person who runs the page. The name is Jess Bell. So welcome to the podcast, Jess. Thank you very much. Jess, let's get started by you kindly giving us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. Okay. Um, just uh, I'm, I'm from the uh, Midwest in Michigan, uh, the southeast uh, uh, side uh, around Detroit area. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. Oh. Um, and uh, I, I don't know what else. Do you, <laughs> what else would you like to know? Since you're an engineer, it makes me interested in wondering how does that influence your political views. Um, I mean that's an, that's an interesting question. I've never really kind of thought about that. Um, but I think I think as an engineer, you're kind of you're kind of trained to think critically. Okay. Um, so you know, there's you know, there's stuff that you can say it's face value and then you, you kind of dig deeper and then you you kind of find out more information about a, a topic so I guess you know from you know from an engineering standpoint it's you know you, you do a little bit of research before you come to a conclusion oh, that's and, good. Then, um, and, and, and then it, it, I guess that really applies to everything in, in life uh, or, True. Uh, from my standpoint never really thought about that but yeah I mean I don't look at things from, you know, if someone tells me something, I'm not the kind of person that says, okay, well, I guess that's truth because, you know, I, you know, I, that, you know, the one person has said that, um, you know, I'll, I'll take it as truth as long as I don't find anything else that, that contradicts that. So, um, but yeah, it's more of a, 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 I don't want to say cognitive, but, you know, it's, it's critical thinking is, is probably the, the best way to describe it. Sounds sounds good. So, what type of engineer is a mechanical, chemical? What type of engineer? Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. Oh, electrical. Okay, cool. So, how did you get involved in politics? Um, I wouldn't say I'm involved in politics, but okay. I think you know when I when I made the page. Well, I, I made that page a long time ago. <laughs> huh. um, you know, it was at the point where, you know, it, it just seemed like, you know, you watch, you know, you watch CNN and then you watch Fox and then you watch, you know, you listen to NPR and, you know, everybody has their little different agenda. And, you know, I think at that point I was watching the debates. It might have been when the first, when Barack Obama was first being, um, elected during during that season. Oh my, that's um, a long time ago. Yeah, that that was a very long time ago. And you know, some of the, you know, some of the things that I saw was just like, you know what? I mean, this is not even you know, if you ask a just a human being on the street what they thought about an issue, they would give you your honest opinion. But if you first introduce yourself as a Democrat or a Republican, that sets their mind in a certain direction <laughs> right um yeah so you know in, in, you know the, the greatest thing is like i've heard is like the individual is smart but you know uh, going into a group the larger the group the the the, the dumber the the uh the, the collective is interesting so so i'm not like hugely political but you know i can definitely see you know, the, the polarization in the country. And I've seen it. It's just, it's really gotten worse over the past 10 years. And, you know, maybe that's me because I'm getting older and I'm taking notice a little bit more. Sure. Um, maybe it's always been this bad, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, over the past 10 years, uh, it's just become super polarized between, you know, you know, it's the, the country is really, it's a, our, the, the political nature of our country, the, the division, is a reflective of leadership. So, our country, in my opinion, I don't think the country could really become 
uh, unified. Uh, uh, not our leadership is unified. I mean, our leadership is is bipartisan. You know, if someone presents a uh, an issue or or a bill, and they see that oh, a Democrat has produced this bill, automatically all the Republicans are against it. And I don't understand why that is. <laughs> you know, you know, if you're an elected official, you should be representing your, you should be representing your, your, your the people that, that voted for you, instead okay. of going after the, the the party. So right now, I think it's party over the people, and I think that's got to change. Sure. Since your page is called Abolish Political Parties, and you're starting to get into it already, what would you say is wrong with political parties? What is the inherent danger and problem with political parties? It it opens the door for a very few individuals to get their agenda through. Okay. So uh, you look at you look at Republicans, you look at Democrats, and you know who really drives the party, right? I mean, there's yeah. There's a couple of key figures, right? There's Mitch McConnell and there's Nancy Pelosi. Um, and nobody goes against them, right? If you're, if you're a Democrat, you don't go against Nancy Pelosi. Um, if you're Mitch, you know, if you're Republican, Mitch McConnell is like, you know, that's your leader. That's the one you take, um, you take your advice from, but that's not really how it should be. It should be, you take, you should vote based on how your district wants you to vote. Right, it's not it's not a political thing at that point. Um, so, but I, the real the real danger there is, you know, from the people that are act, you know, from us that are the voters, we kind of lose you, we lose a freedom. <laughs> you know, we're we're subject to. You know, I'm sorry. You said we're subject to what? We're 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 subject to. Sorry, there's a train going by. Um, we're subject to the opinions of the person that we elected, and that should be opposite. The person we elected should be subject to the, the people that voted him in. Yeah. Um, but once once you get into a party platform, that party is now is propping you up. Like it gives you more power than you should. Huh. So, what would you say to people who would say we sh- we can vote parties out and then we wouldn't have the problems? We could vote for independence or whatever. So, what would you say to those people? Um, what would I say to the people who say just get rid of the 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 party system and just go for independence? No, not necessarily all to that extent, but if. If we're having, if they would say if we're having trouble with the parties, if we don't like the parties, if we don't like people like Mitch McConnell, and that gets into a lot of people mention term limits as a check on people like that. So they would say we could vote them out because we oh, still have the vote. Yeah, I mean that's that's a grand idea, uh, but again, it goes back to you know the opinions of the public is kind of a reflection of leadership. So. Uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, is, when he goes back to run, well, hopefully he won't run <laughs> based on what we saw a few days ago. Um, but, you know, let, let's say, um, you know, a, a person in Congress wants to run again and, you know, they, they want another seat. They're the, they're the front runner. So when they yeah. say, I'm, I'm the Republican front runner. And then people say, well, I'm a Republican. So I'm going to reply for him whether or not I, Agree with all of their values or not? Okay. So, right. So you look at a Democrat, they'll be like, "Oh, well, he's a Democrat." They they already have this preconceived notion of who that person is, and what they're going to do. Like Democrats, oh, they're just going to tax us, right? And like, yeah. oh, you're Republican, so you're automatically going to, you know, you know, take take away birthing rights or whatever. And for the, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be true, right? You know. Even if, you know, they're up there on stage that says, no, we're not going to create new taxes, um, the fact that you're a Democrat puts puts the mindset into the voters uh, about what you're going to do, especially if you're on the opposite side. 
Okay. So if you're on the if you're a Republican, and you're looking at a Democrat, you are you automatically have a preconceived notion of what a Democrat is. Sure. Um, but you know, if you get a candidate up there and you don't know, they don't say what party they're from. I mean, they might. I mean, you're always going to gravitate to one sort of I, ideal or another, but you don't say that. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat, or you don't you don't label yourself when you first get up there. The majority of people are going to listen to what you have to say versus the the party that you have, you have joined. All right. So I think there's more merit, um, and I I think we'll get a better quality of candidates, um, even if you know deep in their hearts they are Democrat or Republican. I I don't I, I personally I think most people are, are you know intermediate or uh, they're they're moderates, <laughs> if you really look at it. Sure. Um, but you know, if if you're going to have a rally, like you know these rallies, you know everybody everybody's on the same side, so they're going to agree with everything this person is going to say. But do you really have to? I mean, what's wrong with agreeing with half of what the person says, uh, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. there's there's no fault in that. And I think when we get into political discussions, people say there is something wrong with that. So huh. you know, there's like, you know, you know, it's an all or nothing kind of attitude, and um, and it's just something I don't agree with. And sure. that's, that's kind of what political parties do is they they become this giant entity of all or nothing. You're either with me or you're against me kind of attitude. So on the local level, a lot of races are nonpartisan. So would you would you advocate? You, so I trust you think that's a good thing, or is that not enough? I, it's a, it's a good thing, but I, it's not enough. It's not it's it would not be enough for me. Okay. Because look, look at the country as a whole. You know, even from the state level. So we had. I mean, well, let's, let's go back a, a little bit. Let's go back to January 6th. That was, that was a, just a debacle in, yeah. in our history, right? And it became a, a, a partisan issue. Like, you were either for Donald Trump, and if you were, automatically he was, you know, somebody cheated and he wasn't going to get in. You know, it's, it's some, something had to happen. So they're going to storm the Capitol and have a, a revolution based on this ideal. Um, so there was no, there was no critical thinking uh, on that side. Um, and on the other side, if you're, if you were a Democrat, it's like, it's all a bunch of hardwash and there wasn't any election fraud and blah, 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 blah. You know, and the truth is it, you know, when they started looking into it, yeah, there was election fraud. Um, you know, it wasn't much, uh, it wasn't going to change the outcome of the election, but it did find some things. You know, at least people said, you know what, let's look into it and and, hmm. and be reasonable about this. But, you know, it was that, you know, a mass of people just following one person because he was one, a part of, you know, their political party and that political party represents me. It does it. That That's the problem. Like if we had, let's say we pick out political parties from from Congress and we had... I don't know. Let's, let's, let's take one of the top, maybe one of the top issues of, um, you know, the 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 budget. So the budget is is a perfect example of why bipart or partisanship is just destroying everything. So there's people who set forth a budget, and there's a lot of people that review review the budget, but there's also a lot of senators and Republican or senators and representatives that kind of admit that they don't really read everything. Hmm. They wait to, they wait to hear it from their constituents about what this bill is. So right there, <laughs> you know, you've got someone who has read the bill but really has it in their best interest to skew what the bill is to to make it look bad if it was from a Democrat or to make it look good if it was from a Republican. So that's kind of how they swing votes, right? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, so-and-so, he's been with us for so long. Let's, 
you know, let's uh, let's let's give this budget a shot. Do I have your vote? And you know, if they're on the both same with the political parties, that's easy. They'll be like, yeah, you got my vote. But if they're opposing parties, guess what? The more the, the chances are of getting that vote is pretty much zero. Now, had they both looked at the bill and they looked at the budget and they came to their own decision, I think we would have, you know, a much more of a, you know, instead of this 50-50 stuff, you know, voting for, for bills, we would probably have something more of a 60-70 uh, percent agreeing or disagreeing. Okay. So I, I think that the dividing line is, you know, if you're part of the party, you vote with the party. Um, and that's not, that's not the way our, our forefathers wanted it to be, number one. Um, and, you know, kind of going through, and I was kind of rereading the, the farewell address, uh, from Washington, and he, he kind of warned against that. He's like, you know, once, once you get, you know, once you start driving yourself into a political party, or even, you know, he goes, if you're from the north or from the south, east or west, once you start you know, making your decisions based on your geologic location or your your political party affiliation or even your religious affiliation, once you solely start making your decisions based on the group that you belong to, it, you you lose freedom. You lose the, the freedom to choose, to choose, you know, and, and decide for yourself. Hmm. So given that many countries, if not most countries in the world, have some type of party system, whether they have a two-party system like us or they have a three-party or parliamentary party, some countries, unfortunately, have a one-party system. So how do – okay, first of all, how would a one-party system work because that's no – there's no – there's no resistance there because there's one party and also – how do we change this since it's so ingrained and since it's already been so well entrenched in our world and we didn't heed Washington? So how do we, now that the cat's back out of the, out of the bag, how do we put the cat back in the bag? And what about the it one party? Be, it would be very interesting if we could just get something on the ballot that says, would you like to have political parties or not? Oh, okay. Put it to the vote of the, the, vote of the people. I don't think that would ever happen in a million years because I think the parties would be like, no, we're not putting that on the bill. Um, but, you know, from a, a lot of people I talk to, they're like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, the, you know, this partisanship is getting ridiculous, and it, it's definitely hurting us, um, sure. you know, hurting the voter. Um, I don't think I've ever talked to somebody that says, no, I, I, I think, you know, you know, Two party system is the perfect thing in the world and we should we should keep on going the way we're going. <laughs> um I think everybody thinks there there just has to be a fundamental change in the way we do right. politics. So a ballot initiative referendum type thing would be the best way to get this into action. I, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it'd be interesting what the, the outcome of that. Um and that's the voice of the people. Sure. So then, you know, political parties that you really got to make a decision be like, the voice is, let's say the voice of the people says no, uh, overwhelmingly. I mean, if it was a 50-50, that's a pretty hard decision to say, yeah, let's get rid of something. But if it's an overwhelming vote, like, a, you know, it's up in the 60s and 70% of the people say, I don't want political parties anymore, and then they have to, you know, our leadership's going to have to take it seriously, um, whether they like it or not. I mean, it's, it is what it is. We are a country, you know, of the people and for the people. Yeah. So, but some, I mean, some will disagree. I mean, that, you know, and that's, that's something to use the respected too, right? So if someone says, you know, Chaffa God, you're, you're completely off the mark. I'll be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's hear you out. I mean, that's, okay. that's part of, that's, that's part of, actually being an adult and listening to somebody else's opinion. And, you know, I always said, you can respect somebody's opinion, but you don't have to agree with it. True. So, you know, you don't have to be dismissive. You can say, all right, well, I, 
I respect that opinion. I respect you talking to me about that. I just don't agree. So how would you address an opposition I hear, I could hear people saying is that parties put a check on each other because if we didn't have parties, then it might become a dictatorship. I would, I would not agree with that. Okay. I would not agree with that because the checks and balances really come from, you know, the the entities that we already put in place. Oh, we have a Congress. Yeah, okay. we already have a Congress. We have a Senate, and they're made up of people. Those that's the checks and balances to either a governor or a president. Uh, you know, that's 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 the push and pull. Okay. So to to add on top of that, a political party just adds in um, an influence that's not of the voter, I guess. It would be probably the best way to put it. That right. influence is more that influence is gonna be for what is good for the party, uh and and not what's good for the people. Sure. Makes sense. In our country, fortunately we do have those things put into place in our constitution. Some countries don't, unfortunately, so th they would be more prone to that. But we have that in place, like you're saying. So that that is a good way to do the checks and balances because we don't need any more checks and balances. You're saying, right? Because we already have solid checks and balances. Right. It's already built in. All right. That's good. So do you think because of the increasing partisanship, the increasing polarization, it's going to culminate where people will ultimately embrace this anti-party idea? I don't, unfortunately, I don't think so. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I would love for, uh, you know, to actually see if that comes to a ballot and see if, you know, a lot of people agree with myself. But okay. You know, judging from like the past elections, it just seems like, you know, it just seems like we are so ingrained in, you know, me versus you. Uh -huh. It would be very hard to, to, to do that. I mean, it's, I mean, how, how do you, how do you change somebody's mind? I mean, when they they see this as this is this is how it is, not versus you know what what things could be, um, you know I mean the I you know I don't I don't want to see the <laughs> the Trumpers but because um, that kind of puts me in a little category but um, the the Trumpeteers have a very very distinct mindset about things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that that's really brought to a head about this polarization of the country is like, you know, there's people who are really, really into Trump and what he does doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if he's had indictments. It doesn't matter if he's been caught in lies. It's just they are for that person and that's it. So, you know, how do you take that mentality and get them to be critical thinkers? Yeah, that'd so be hard. That that's that that's really my stand. And, and that's really about yes, you know, that's fifty percent of the country who aren't critically thinking. Oh no. <laughs> and I think that's mean to say, but it doesn't mean it's not necessarily true. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a pretty assessment, but sometimes in order to that's reality, so you have to make the assessment. I, I think it would be I think it'd be great if this started in, in schools. Okay. So I I think in high school there's you can take political science or maybe even college. Um and to run an exercise of, of like a mock election and you do it a couple of times and you know, one of the times you, you have two parties and then you do it another time where you don't know what this who this person represents and see what that outcome is. I think that would be a very interesting, very interesting scenario to play out. Okay. And, you know, 
if you learn in school that critical thinking can get you into a place that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, polarized on any subject or issue, you know, that that's where it really starts. You know, you got to, you got to, we got to get our kids to critically think, you know, and, you know, even think beyond, beyond themselves. Like my kids, I tell them I can be wrong at any point. You know, if you don't think I'm right, go ahead and question it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, it's not like, yeah. okay, I'm your dad. I tell you, you do it. You know, in certain things, sure. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to win because I'm the dad. But, uh, when you do, when you teach your kids to critically think, they become adults who critically think. Sure, makes sense. So, Jess, how can our audience support you in your efforts to abolish political parties? I, if if they can if they could demand a uh, a vote <laughs> on either a state level or a federal level. I mean, even if we took one state and we got that on a state ballot, that would be, that would be huge. Okay. That would, that would, that would create ripples. <laughs> That's what we kind of need. We need, we need some, uh, we need some ripples in the, in this political party system to, to say, you know, if the question is put in front of you, people are going to think about it. But, you know, if they keep listening to the CNNs and the Fox News and all the other, uh, partisan news shows, um, you know, they're going to go about the day and be like, oh, yeah, CNN said so-and-so, and, you know, your coworkers are going to be like, well, you said, that's because you listen to CNN, and then we're like, and then, then there's a fight that breaks loose because you listen to Fox News and that kind of stuff. But yeah. let's, let's get it in front of the individual and get it away from the groups. I want the individual to make a critical decision about what a political party does to a country and whether they need it, well, whether it's needed, whether it's something that they agree with, and whether or not they want to just completely abolish it. So, sure. you know, putting it to a vote would be ideal for me. Yeah, that would be, that'd be awesome. At the very least, we could should consider it. You know, and we could see like 50% say, no, we need political parties. And then, hey, you know what? At least people have voted on it. Yep. Um, yep. I, I've, I've got a pretty big feeling if we get it in front of the voters and the individual, I think at least 70% of the country will say, I don't want this political party system anymore. Wow. All right. May that happen, folks. May that happen somehow. Jess, we thank you for coming on the podcast today and talking about your novel approach to politics here. I appreciate the uh, opportunity. We wish you all the best in your personal and professional endeavors with the page, with your career, with your family, with everything. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care and all the best. Bye.